Hi, today we've got a couple of items that have arrived from Banggood and these are both branded Fnerzy. First of all, we have got a soldier nine here. So this is the new HS02, a JBC style USB portable soldering iron. And then we've also got a USB charge tester. And we'll actually use this in conjunction with this today to have a look at the power that's being delivered to the soldering iron. This video is sponsored by PCBWay and later on in the video we're going to be testing out this soldering station with some boards that I've had made at PCBWay. And if you want to get your own low cost PCBs made you can click on PCB instant quote and put in the details here and you can get a whole range of PCB specifications selected for your particular design. And I want to highlight a couple of new additions to PCBWay's facilities. So first of all we've got the UV printing where you can get an actual colour picture printed over your PCB which can make some really interesting PCB designs and also if we go down the options here and click on customized services and advanced options there is now an option for black FR4 material so if any of those options interest you don't forget to visit pcbway.com. Here's the soldering iron on Banggood and it's available in two different versions the lower cost one is £38.78 plus a small charge for shipping to the UK and this is just the basic system with one soldering cartridge. And this is a really nice little soldering iron based on the specifications. So it's designed to be powered by a USB power supply. Supposedly it can deliver up to 100 watts into the JBC tips. It supports um, power delivery and quick charge. There is a second version which includes the additional JBC style cartridges. So you've got more of a selection. And this one just commands a slightly higher price, £53, and again, a small shipping charge. Then we have the USB tester, and there's two different versions of this. There's one with and one without Bluetooth. The one without Bluetooth is coming in at about £27, and the one with Bluetooth is about £34. And this is designed to test the current consumption of various USB items, but you can also use it to measure charge so that you can verify the size of batteries and that kind of thing. I've been sent the version with the additional soldering cartridges and then the soldering iron itself comes in this nice little carry case to keep it protected. And we've got a little card which briefly shows you how to use the soldering iron but you can also use these QR codes to view some videos and also view the actual user manual properly. And then we've got a QC card. And we've got the soldering iron itself which is kept quite rigidly in the case with this moulding here. And then in the top part of the case, we've got storage for one cartridge, although you could store them loose in here if you wanted to. We've got a cable which allows you to plug the solder iron into something that has a standard DC style barrel jack. And then just underneath this cover here, um, we have to remove the cartridge first, but we've got a little stand um, so that you don't have to leave it sort of balancing on the bench. You can fold this up and allow the solder iron to sit on here without burning anything. Here's the Soldier 9 itself, and it does feel pretty reasonable quality, actually. I think the whole thing is made of metal rather than plastic, so it does give it a slightly nicer feel. We've got a colour IPS display just here for controlling the temperature and also uh, browsing the menu for the various options. We've got a up and down as well as an OK button for controlling the Soldier 9. And then on the end here, we've got the USB-C connector for powering it. Now, this doesn't have a built-in battery or anything, so you do need a power bank or an AC adapter to actually run the soldering iron. But that's pretty much all there is to the soldering iron itself. And then to use it, we've got this uh, soft grip, which does actually feel really nice. And we just twist the cap off. And then we've got the port for inserting the T245 cartridges. So we'll take one of these out of the case now and you just simply push it until it bottoms out and we're ready to get soldering. And then we've got the little cradle here with the sponge for cleaning the tip and if you want to rest it between solder joints you just place it on your bench like that and it will keep it off the bench and prevent it accidentally burning something. And you can keep the cartridge in here and replace the cap and that will keep the cartridge safe and uh, particularly with the spiky ones stop you accidentally spiking yourself. Uh, when you're taking it out the carry case. If you do buy the full kit, this is the array of soldering cartridges that you'll get with the solder iron. So we've got a conical tip and a chisel tip. These are probably the two most useful for general purpose soldering. Uh, then we've got two of these blade type soldering cartridges which can be useful for surface mount soldering, especially ICs and that kind of thing where you can drag the cartridge along the pins. 
And then these ones are probably the least useful. They're extremely fine conical tip cartridges and this is really for very light work when doing SMD rework because you can't put a lot of heat into the solder joint with these very fine geometry tips without moving to some other cartridge materials like copper. Here is the USB tester and this is quite a nice looking tester compared to the old one that I've been using for a long time. The whole thing's made from metal completely enclosed. Uh, I've got the version here with Bluetooth so we've got either Bluetooth or a PC connection. You can actually stream and control the device remotely. If you don't want to just look at this uh, little display, you can download the software and look at all the waveforms and everything on a PC. We've got a few connectors on here. So three methods of providing power to the unit. So uh, USB, standard connector here, Type-C and a micro USB. And then the items that you plug in to draw power can either be Type-C or again a standard USB connector. We've got a little button on the bottom here to enable power delivery communications and then we've got the user interface at the top here. So a scroll wheel that you can also push in as well as a back button. On the front of the unit we've got a full colour LCD. It's 1.7 inch and there's quite a lot of space on here for information. Now the user interface isn't the most intuitive. I think if you didn't have a user menu, you would not find half of the features. But you can scroll through various screens. So this one is more dedicated to looking at the protocol used to deliver power to the um, to the item here. And you can either listen in on what's being um, drawn from it from the device that you've got connected to it, or you can use this to change the mode. And then we can scroll through to the next screen and we can look at the noise. Uh, but this is like an oscilloscope looking at the voltage and the current being drawn. Then we can do a cable measurement to look at the impedance. It puts a load on it and then we can work out what the impedance of the cable is. We've got a simple screen here which just shows you voltage, current and power. And if you press the scroll wheel in you get an extra digit of resolution. And then we've got a screen more dedicated to looking at power and energy. Um, so we've got min, max and average as well as accumulated um, just on these two items here. And I think you can clear the counters by holding the back button, no, holding the scroll wheel, click clear, and then it will reset some of these counters. Now this is where the user interface gets a little bit more confusing. So if you hold the scroll wheel to the side, uh, then we can do things like battery capacity testing and there's 10 slots for you to store data in. Currently, we're looking at uh, group one here. But if we go back and then hold it to the left, we've got all of our storage spots here. And we can look at all of the data after we've captured it all. If we go along to the next screen, then if you hold the button to the left, uh, what we can actually do is inject um, signals onto the USB connector and actually force it to do uh, various power modes. So if we look at Quick Charge 3, for example, here, uh, we're getting the standard 5 volts in, but we can increment the voltage here and get the USB power supply, provided it supports Quick Charge 3, to increase the output voltage accordingly. So that's quite nice. So you can, uh, if you want to use it for other purposes, you can just get a specific voltage out of the USB connector on the side here. And you can do this for various protocols uh, depending on which one that your power supply supports. And if you hold it to the right, uh, we've got things like power delivery listener. So when you've got an item plugged into here, we can just listen in and see what's being uh, communicated to the charger. And then there's some things to do with other types of cable. I'm not 100% sure what these ones are. And then if we look on the page here and then scroll to the right, then we've got the actual main user interface. So you can change things like um, the display brightness, temperature symbol, system language, how it records stuff, how it triggers, and then we've got some details about the system that's running on here, and you can do firmware updates when they release them on the website. I've installed the software for the USB tester, you can see that at the bottom here, so on the graph we're going to have the power being delivered into the soldier line, and then we've got voltage, current, power, as well as the voltage on the data lines, and the mode being used for uh, selecting the voltage from the power supply. So let's plug this in. And we can see we've got that really nice colour display. To go into the menu, you press the up and down button together, which you can just about do with one finger. And then we can go into the first option, which is sleep set. 
and in here we've got two different uh, power modes so we've got sleep as well as standby so this is really nice it's got an accelerometer built in and if no motion is detected for a certain period of time at this moment it's set to one minute then it will drop to the sleep temperature of 180 degrees C and then if there's another five minutes of no movement then it will turn off the cartridge entirely and if you want to change any of these settings you can scroll through the items here press OK and you can adjust the setting so this allows you to change the sleep temperature anywhere from 100 degrees C up to 200 degrees C 180 is a pretty good value there and that's all there is on the sleep menu we hold down the OK to go back up to the main menu and press OK on handle set and here we've got some presets. So as well as being able to adjust the temperature up and down with the up and down button, you can also choose from three temperature presets on the main screen. If we want to adjust any of those, we can press OK. And we can go to uh, channel three, for example, adjust the temperature with the up down button, press OK. And to store it, you hold down the OK button and it shows you what those three presets are. Then we've got the voltage and you can select the voltage from here if you've got a power delivery or quick charge compatible power supply. Let's try that, press OK on here. And you can see it's already changed the voltage down here to 15, let's change that back to 20. In fact, it does it in real time. And then we've also got power. So if you've got a power supply that isn't capable of delivering uh, full power, you'll notice because it will reset, then you can adjust uh, the maximum power that you're gonna draw from the power supply uh, using this setting here then we've got the step size so you can adjust the temperature in either you know one degree five degree ten degree steps whatever suits you five degrees is a pretty good setting there we've also got the ability to calibrate the cartridge and it's a three-point calibration so you test it at 150 250 and 350 and you can adjust for each of those individual temperatures which is quite nice and that's that for that menu item and then we've got system settings here so you can change the language uh, Chinese or English you've got the handedness or hand mode uh, basically the orientation of the LCD so if you hold it in your right hand this is the correct orientation but if you flip it over to your left hand side you'll need the LCD upside down it doesn't switch automatically units degree C degree F no Kelvin uh, volume so this is just the beeper that it has when you press a button. Brightness, you can adjust from one to 10. We're currently at the, uh, the highest brightness here. And then we can do a firmware update over the USB line. And then we've got about, so uh, HS02A version 1.4. So that's the menu. And we can go back to the main screen. And then to actually start heating, make sure you've got the cap off I'm not sure if you absolutely have to, but it makes sense to. Then you can press the OK button. And it will start heating up the cartridge. So I think we saw a peak of about 90 watts on the power meter there. And it is up to 300 degrees C. Now, um, you'll notice it did lock to that temperature. It's not displaying the true temperature once it gets close. Now, to go to the various presets, you can just press OK and it will highlight it briefly. Now I'm not a fan of the way it scrolls these numbers through. I would have liked to have just seen more of a standard display. I think it's quite a gimmick. And it's showing the DC voltage there. Now there is a bar graph as well which shows how much power is being drawn. But the user interface is pretty simple. So you can use the OK button to scroll through the presets. Or you can just go up and down with the buttons and this is where that setting for the step size comes into account so I set it to 5 degrees C and we can adjust it in 5 degrees steps. So we've got it set to 330 degrees C let's see what the calibration is like and it's actually spot on. So yeah no problems there let's change the temperature to 350. The beep there means it's reached temperature and again, pretty much spot on, just a couple of degrees off there. And 370. Again, just a couple of degrees off, but overall pretty good. So the calibration is quite nice on there, right from the factory.
to work really nicely and it does drive the genuine JBC cartridges without any problem as well. Now it is slightly lower power than the Ixon stations I think because it's running from the 20 volt supply whereas the Ixon station drives them at 24 volts and that's reflected in the power readings but for general purpose soldering and even some heavy duty soldering this showed absolutely no problem whatsoever. Did really well melting solder onto the coin you saw it putting about 65 watts or so into the coin at that point so really good performance from this little soldering iron there's really not a lot to complain about I think the only thing that you need to be aware of if you're thinking about buying this soldering iron is that it comes with no cable and it comes with no power supply so you do need to provide those two items yourself but other than that it does work really nicely and as I said works properly with genuine JBC cartridges and then the little power meter was doing a really nice job with the Windows interface as well. It looks like the Bluetooth is designed for use with the mobile app only, uh, but we saw the data being streamed there. And you can actually control pretty much all the settings from the Windows app. So also, this seemed to work really nicely. While I was soldering, I did have to swap out the cartridge from the little 903 to the larger 5mm chisel. And you can do that while it's all powered up. It supports hot swapping. You can just remove the cartridge and it beeps to tell you put a, to put a new one in. And then as soon as you insert it, it's detected and you're ready to start heating it up again. The only issue is that it doesn't come with any means to remove the cartridge from the iron. So if you don't have one of these silicone pads, you will have to wait for it to cool down. I definitely don't recommend using pliers or anything like that to try and remove the cartridge. This does grip it quite well. And these cartridges are quite easy to damage with pliers, so don't go doing that. But overall, the performance is really quite good. Um, it's quite difficult to fault the performance, especially compared to some of the recent soldier irons that we've looked at that are powered directly from the mains. This is really quite impressive in comparison. So uh, yeah, if you've got a power bank and you want to do some portable soldering, or if you want to use this on your bench, this seems like it would handle pretty much every job. So we'll put links to these two items at Banggood, as well as the AliExpress listings in the description down below, as well as in a pinned comment. And also, if you're getting some PCBs made or you want some parts 3D printed, don't forget to visit our sponsor for this video, PCBWay at PCBWay.com. But until next time, if you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching.